Hi, folks. Say, yesterday I was zeroing this Mossberg 464 lever action rifle that I went bear hunting with years ago and haven't used since. <laughs> and uh, I thought, what the hey, I can do a video on this. Why not? Zeroing the 3030. So I had shot a three shot group that was about two inches low and inch one on top of the other, about an inch. MOA 3030 lever action is pretty nice stuff. And I was using some 170 grain bullets, which I usually don't shoot, but like for bear, you'd probably want a heavier bullet. Um, so I thought, well, let's just do a video on zeroing the 3030. Now, I'm not saying I'm going to necessarily use this ammunition for deer hunting, but I might. We're just going to see how it works. But what I want to show you is where I'm going to zero this. Now, I started turning my scope for corrections yesterday when I thought, wait a minute, I should do a video. So I'm not sure if I turned them back exactly right. But if I did, I think we can move up. And what have I got to go here? If I remember right, I wanted to go power up on this baby. Yeah, there's two. So I'm two inches low. So I am going to dial to be two and a half inches high, I hope. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, one, two. <laughs> and if I didn't mess that up, I don't remember if I adjusted my windage either. So let's just give it a couple of clicks to the left. Now let's just do one because I'm only off about a quarter. Yeah, I'm even on the line, so. And we've got some wind coming in like this, a little bit of a left wind that could mess us up. Let's just see what we can do now. I have got them. What have I got for a scope on here? An old Bushnell Elite 3200, three to seven. That's about perfect for a 3030. I am aiming to work out to about 200 yards with this. And I want to set it up for maximum point blank range. So let's just see what this thing's going to do now. I am going to aim dead center on the orange center square. Oh, there I am straight up. How far though? Let's see. One, two, three. Maybe a little more, so I'm going to have to come down just a smidgen. One, two, three. Nice. Boy, my line is just right. Might be a little too much left now because of wind. Wind ought to be blowing it about. I don't know. I'm going to pull this sleeve down and not get an abrasion on my elbow again. I always get that. I am impressed with how well this rifle shoots. Here we go. Hmm, looks like that one jumped over to the right two inches. I don't like that. The elevation looks about right. Let me study that a little more. Seven X, it's a little hard to count my squares here. Yeah, it's one. Yeah, I'm about two up. A little more than that, maybe. And about two up. But I don't know why it jumped over to the right. Because last night, unless I turned it wrong, Good old Ron's been known to do that. Right. We'll give her three to the left. See if it's done. Because after that group last night, it suggests this rifle really shoots straight for windage. But it could have been a gust of wind out there too, but that's a little much. There we go. Oh, that one's right up on top. Yeah, my windage looks good now. I'm just off the line and I am up one. Two. Yeah, yeah, quite two. There's my line one. About two. So I could come up two more clicks, give it a half inch up. But now I'm, I'm, I'm out of ammunition, guys. So oh, this is called planning. I specialize in it. But I think you get the general idea. Now the question is, why am I zeroing so bloody high at 100 yards with a 30-30? As I said, I want to try to reach out to 200 yards with a point blank hold. So I'm trying to keep all of my shots inside of that 80 inch circle. If I don't go any higher than three inches, when it drops three or four inches, I'm out of my target zone. And eight inches is fairly conservative. So if this thing is shooting an inch or even two inch, two MOA, 
I'm still going to be inside of that circle unless I really mess up while I'm shooting. And with this scope, <laughs> I shouldn't. I don't do very well with open sights on these. That's why I put a scope on this one. And I am really impressed with how well it shoots. My impression of lever action rifles all these years has been that, yeah, they're not all that great for a precision shooting. And I think it was mostly just the open sights and my eyes. Once I got a scope on it, I went, whoa, a one inch scoop, that's pretty impressive. So I'm going to keep working with this. But in the meantime, let's go up to the office and look at some ballistic cables and look at what a 3030 will do for trajectory if we zero it at 50 yards, 100 yards, and 150 yards, or 160 yards, somewhere in that vicinity, and just see how much of a point blank range we can get out of it. All right, guys. <laughs> Let's get down to the paperwork, shall we? I ran off some numbers, and what you're going to see on this chart is that obviously we're shooting a 3030 Winchester, we're shooting a 150 grain spear, and that's a SPFN flat nose. The BC on that is rated 0.255, which is pretty high for 150 in a 3030. And they're driving at 2,300 feet per second. Now, this doesn't mean that I was actually shooting it. Obviously, we said I was shooting a 170 grain bullet. But I'm doing different numbers here and different bullets just to make the point that we all shoot maybe different bullets. So don't just take one person's this zero works for me without taking into account the cartridge that you're shooting and the velocity. And I haven't measured the velocity yet. We're just assuming this is 2,300 feet per second. The general idea is to show you how to run some ballistic tables on these ballistic calculators online and get your numbers based off of what you're actually shooting at what velocity. But just for this exercise, we're going to pretend we're shooting this nice 150 grain spear bullet at 2300 feet per second and we're going to get the drops and the energy remaining by sighting it in for different distances. I am not saying you have to sight it in at 150 or 160 or 170. I just want to show you how the numbers change when we're sighting it in this way. So on the first one we have a zero at 50 yards, then we have a zero at 100 yards, then 150, then 200. And then we're going to just compare the drops and drifts and where our bullet is landing because a lot of guys get confused like I used to be when I got started. How high am I at 25 yards if I'm zero for 100? Am I too high then at 25 or 50 or what exactly is going on? Hi friends, say if you're enjoying these videos and would like to help out, we've got an opportunity for you. It's called Patreon. You essentially become a patron of the arts such as this is. <laughs> But seriously, uh, we do appreciate the support we get from all of our patrons. And if you would like to help out, just go to the link below, patreon.com, and you can help support the programming and suggest topics for us to cover on future episodes of Ron Spomer Outdoors. So at 50 yards, if you zero it, you are going to be 0.4 inches low at 100, almost a half inch. This is a great way to sight if your longest shot is probably going to be 100 yards. You've got a maximum point blank range out to 150 yards. That means you're going to drop three inches from your point of aim at 150. Well, you know a deer's chest. You can figure eight inches. So if it drops from the middle three inches, you've still got an inch to spare. And in reality, you probably have a little bit more than that, depending on the size of the deer. Some of them are pretty darn big. It's just a good safe number to work with about a three inch drop maximum. That way, if your aim is off a little bit, and your rifle doesn't group all that well, it might drop an extra inch or something. Good little number. So 50 yards, carry out to 150 at max. But for a 200 yard shot, 8.6 inches of drop. That's getting a little excessive. You can hold on the back line and that works pretty nicely, especially if you have a scope, but you need to know the distance. And there's where a laser rangefinder comes in handy. Now let's compare that to a zero at 100 yards. Obviously you've gotta be a little bit high at 50 yards. How high? Not even a quarter of an inch, 0.2 inch. So you're not even a quarter inch high at 50. Bingo, dead on hold. You're dead on again at 100. You're 2.5 inches low at 150, 7.7 .7 low at 200. So there's not a lot of difference between either of those. I think you could go any way in there, any way like 50 yards, 75 yards, 100 yards, pretty much all the same for dropping it in there out to about 150 yards. But if you zero at 160, now you're starting to add a little bit of reach. So you're going to be 1.3 inches high at 50, 2 inches high at 100, 0.6 inches high still at 150, and then you drop 3.5 inches at 200 yards. 
you've essentially got a dead on hold at any distance out to 200 yards. That is pretty versatile. Now, if you're hunting heavy brush and woods cover where you don't get to 200 yards, or you're worried about having to shoot through a fairly narrow hole and you don't want your bullet going up and then dropping down because you might hit a branch or something, you might want to be a little bit concerned about that. But I don't see where going two inches above your uh, point of aim, what are you looking at, about this much? You're going to be able to snake it through almost any hole one would try to shoot through in the woods. I kind of like that one. So you might want to consider that 160. To me, that's that's the ultimate for a 100 for a 30-30 and 150 green bullet. Now they what happens if you want to reach out there so you put a 200 yard zero on it? Well, now you're going to be two inches high at 50, almost four inches high at 100, still three, almost three and a half inches high at 150, and then dead on at 200. I don't know. To me, that's kind of a little bit too much of the high stuff because most of your shots are going to come inside of 150 yards. I don't think it's worth having that much height in your maximum ordinate just for the few times you might shoot something at 200 yards. And personally, with my eyes and open sights, I don't think I'd try a 200 shot, 100 yard shot. I'm down to 150, maybe even 100. I have to do a lot more practicing, but I've been playing around with it and Boy, I can put them into the chest cavity at 100 yards with the open sights, but getting out further than that, it gets pretty iffy. I'm going to have to do a lot more practice or maybe look into a peep sight or something, or as I'm doing with that Mossberg rifle, it put a scope on it. I don't like scopes on lever axes. To me, they just kind of takes the balance out of them, and uh, I just like the look of a clean 30-30 lever action, but boy, it sure helps you zero your shots and be on target to have a scope, I tell you that. Now, since we're already talking about different loads, and this is a 150 grain bullet, and that was 170, why don't we optimize our trajectory with a pointed bullet? And I happened to find some of these old Hornadies I used on a bear hunt several years ago. 140 grain monoflex, all copper bullet, hollow nose, got a little polymer tip on it, you can see it right here, and it's a lot sleeker than the flat nose or the round nose, it's going to have a higher BC even though it has less weight, 140 grains instead of 150. The uh, BC on it is uh, 0.277. So it's actually a higher BC than that spear bullet we did here in our earlier numbers. So what's that going to do for our trajectory? Well, let's just run one with 165 yards for my dead on zero. I'm a point, 1.4 inches high at 50, 2.3 inches high. That's my maximum ordinate, the highest I'm going to go in my flight path at 100 yards, just about an inch low at 150.9, and then three inches low at 200. To me, that is pretty safe for a dead on hold, maximum point blank range out to 200 yards with that 140 grain bullet. Now look at the numbers on the red. Those are your remaining energy in the bullet. And at 200 yards, you are under 1,000 foot pounds of energy. And of course, you'll see that they're all the same on the 150 grain bullet because it's going at the same velocity. We just changed the zero distance. So that's not going to change anything with the remaining energy. But do note that a lot of folks think you need a minimum of 1,000 foot-pounds of energy on impact for a good deer cartridge. I don't think it's absolutely true, but it's not a bad benchmark to shoot for. So we're kind of right in there with 900. You start getting further than 200 yards with those 3030s, and those numbers really start to drop and you're getting down into the 500s out there at some distance, maybe 300 yards. I'm not sure. I don't even run them that far. But that's what you have to be concerned about with the 3030. Not just the drop, but the drop in energy remaining in your bullets. So with that 140 grain bullet, you would think, well, there's going to be less energy in that, right? Same number at 200 yards, 903. Why is that with a lighter bullet? Well, we've got a higher ballistics coefficient in that bullet. So it's not losing energy dragging in the wind. Just that simple. So a lot of options in the 140s, the 150s, 160s, and 170s in your 3030. So figure out what works for you. I like these copper bullets with the sharp tips on them. Uh, they have 160 grain too. They may have some new ones. I haven't been looking here lately. And they've also come up with a new copper bullet called the CX. This was the GMX style. But with those rubber tips on there, you can have a more sharply pointed bullet Get your ballistics coefficient up, and that's going to help with your downrange flight. 
You're going to get less wind deflection. I didn't do the wind numbers on this one because I was mostly interested in the drops. And uh, that's how you figure out where you need to zero your 30-30. So take your pick, pick your ammunition, run those numbers, try to get a chronograph and actually shoot over to see what you're getting. Just because it says on the box that this thing should go 2,300 feet per second or 2,250 or whatever doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get that with your rifle. So once you got that number solid, then you know the BC of the bullet, shoot it on the range and figure things out. I think you'll do pretty nicely with one of these zeros. And I'm advertising the 160, 150 yard range. To me, that's kind of the optimum for the 3030. That's the information for me today, guys. Take it or leave it. Um, I hope you do well with your hunt this year, whether you're using a 30-30 or something else. Um, good luck to you, and let us know how you do. Send in some pictures. We we'll always love to hear from you guys. And until next time, I guess it's just time to hunt honest and shoot straight. Mm -hmm.